welcome to Lifestyles of the Strange and Exotic Miscellaneous Stuff Haul. <laughs> now, it seems like it's been forever since I've done one of these. It's either been too dark or some... I just couldn't do it. Yeah. Now, I think my videos are going to be getting darker and darker and darker, as it is now fall in New England. And we have a really crappy weather. So I've got all but one of my lights on in this room, which is one, two, three, four, five. Six is a moot point because it's behind my new curtain. I was wearing something red, and I kind of was drowned out by the background. <laughs> so I changed into my strangely now ill-fitting top type thing. I usually wear it as like a little jacket, but I figured I was blending in. And you know how I blend into a crowd. So this is the first thing in my haul. And this is actually a thing you put in your bathtub, what the hell they call them. Shower curtain, yes. And I just like the patterning, and I love the color. This would make a really cool, you know, dress or something. So, and it's wide. I wanted something a little wider, and it's about the same length. So this is my new background, yay! And I can't remember when I got this. I think I got that Tuesday, but I've gotten various other things. Probably over the course of the month. I can't remember when I last filmed. So. This is just sort of generic stuff. We'll just get right into it. Now, I am still, yet again, on the hunt for, like, the perfect purse. You can find the size, but not the width. But I thought this was just so freaking cute. And again, and this, and this was leather, too. So, red leather. And it has a lot of neat little pockets. And it has, which surprised me, like, two pockets on the inside in the main pocket, and you got your pocket on the outside, and I swear to god this is supposed to be like a wallet type thing. I don't know. I'm still not quite sure about utilizing something that accessible as a wallet on a purse. I don't know. But the only thing I didn't like was the belt, kind of, but I like the fact that it is adjustable. It's a little wonky on the, on the, where it hooks to the metal loops though. I mean, this has been around a while. So it's got that kind of, I've got some history stuff, and it's from some place called something unintelligible. Is it on anything else? I don't know. Ah, tet, tet, bleh, bleh, bleh. Well, whatever it is, it's from some, 1989, Tignanello. Sounds like some weird mutant fruit. Uh, but I thought it was kind of cute. So at some point I might utilize this. But again, not wide enough this way. Well, like I said, red and black are my favorite colors, so I'm a sucker. And today, too, again on my hunt for the perfect purse, I found a Tommy Hilfiger backpack. Well, it was okay. There was a zipper in the back. The zipper opened up the entire back. What is the function of the zipper? It wasn't a pocket. I mean, you open the zipper, and you literally get into the contents of your purse from the back. If you if the zipper unzipped, everything in your purse would fall out. Is there a function to this somehow? Is this like, oh, I gotta quickly get into my purse. I don't want to open the flap, undo the thing, get it from the back. I don't. It just seemed like a totally pointless design function. I mean, it would've been nice if it was a pocket. I went to open it up, and it's like straight into the main body of the purse. Stick to perfume. <laughs> okay, the next things I got, do not include the hook, <clears throat> were some more rickrack and some bias tape that I am, well, I'll just switch over here, doing recipe jars. These are chocolate covered banana cookies. If they don't sell, they'll probably be inside me. So I'm making these for the um, bazaar in like a couple of weeks. And, you know, I want something to kind of, you know, spice it up a bit. And I didn't have quite, you know, the hideously Christmas colors. And I've got like 12 different recipes. So, these would be like $9 since, you know, chocolate ain't cheap. But they're a quart jar with various goodies in them. And it's really hard not opening them up and nipping in the chocolate. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. And I've got the whole thing behind me of like, God, I got pumpkin bread, which is really good. I did have to try that one. 
Um, there's pineapple bread. There's various cookies and bars. So yeah, and these are the chocolate covered banana cookies. You supply your own bananas, obviously. I can't figure out what the heck I did with my stupid recipe cards for this particular one, which really ticks me off. Because, <laughs> you know, the recipe comes with it. <laughs> but anywho, that's what I got these for. To put kind of around the rubber band that holds down the piece of cloth. You think with all the bias tape and the rick rack and stuff I got, I'd have something that would kind of go, but no. But these are 10 cents a piece, so I'm like, yeah, what the hey. So, I'm going to go in my crack pile over here. And I'll have to take off my camera and show you the big, huge thing that I got. I feel really rusty. <laughs> it's been so long since I've done this. Alright then, the next thing I got. Now, my car is so freaking old. I think I probably mentioned this before when I showed you my Adamat CD. I have a freaking cassette player in my car. Which kind of limits you to what you can listen to, other than bear, you know, digging out ancient cassettes you've had forever and ever. You know, things that you used to tape off the radio. Anybody remember those days? Well, I got these. Thank you, ye old goodwill, for selling cassette decks, <laughs> or cassette tapes. And this one is in my car now, which is why the cassette isn't in here. And this is Michael Crawford performs Angel Lord Webber. And it's kind of strange. I mean, of course you're used to the Phantom songs. But then he's doing, like, memory, and it just seems weird, because your brain is hearing Elaine Page instead, you know, like the original people. Wouldn't buy him as Joseph in, you know, Technicolor Dreamcoat, because he ain't no Donny Osmond. <laughs> I mean, he just got a weird voice for that particular character. I don't know, just like, mm, no. But, but a lot of the other songs are really, really good, and I was surprised that they're actually with other people. He does All I Ask of You with um, <laughs> Sarah Brightman in you know Phantom of the Opera and stuff like that. So there are other artists on here which surprised me because I thought it was just him singing the songs. Nope. But it, really, really good. Original Phantom for anybody that doesn't know. And this one is Michael Crawford with the London Symphony Orchestra. Songs from the staging screen, which I have not listened to yet. So they should be going into my car shortly. Which reminds me, I should do that. <laughs> so, we'll see. Uh, this has, like, West Side Story, uh, When You Wish Upon a Star, which I'm not quite sure I want to handle that one. <laughs> uh, In the Still of the Night by Michael Crawford. That should be interesting. Again, memory. So, that's not bad. So, I mean, this was high tech when I was young, okay? This this is what I remember. Does anybody know what a cassette deck from, like, the now generation? It's like, there was actually hard media back then? Everything wasn't digital? God, I feel old. Okay. Stick my hook over here. And the next thing in the list of goodness is this. <laughs> I mean, in a way, it's ugly, but in a way... It's not because I'm a sucker for anything that has an Egyptian motif on it. And this is a little vase, which is really dark. And I thought it was something kind of handmade, which kind of gave it like extra cool factor points. But it isn't. I mean, I don't think it is. Souvenir of the Pagoda in Reading, Pennsylvania. So, I mean, it could be handmade. I don't know what the Pagoda is, if it's a you know artisan place or not. But it's a little vase, and it's got a lady playing the harp and a few onks here and a lady with a, I'm assuming a lotus flower and a black cat suit. I mean, <laughs> it's stylized, but I don't know. I thought it was kind of nifty. I think I paid like two bucks for it or something like that. So, I mean, it's got a few little chips, but it doesn't exactly have the authenticity of something you might actually find in a tomb. That's it. I'm just giving you, you, you your own channel. You can't find Michael's show and it'll just be him napping going... So that's that. Now I just gotta figure out where to put it. <laughs> right now, I think I'll hide it behind my... Nope, I can't do that. I don't know, but I'll put it someplace. Alrighty. Now, the next thing is out of the 50 cent pile. Now, I don't know if this will fit or not. I don't know if I'd wear it. I mean, it's really cool. I like the shiny red fancy stuff. Is it inside out? Have I been born? I don't know. Why is it inside out? Oh, I think I did try it on, but, you know, 
just a little too small and my wrists don't want to fit through the thing. So I actually got this for like lining. So this will probably go in the two coffin purses I kind of have assembled, but you know, in process. So this will be a lining for one of them. I wish it was fit fit though. I mean, I don't know if you can pick it up in the deep gloom of the room. But it's just uh, very similar to this actually, but a lot shinier. And it, oh, it does have a tag. I thought it was one of those mystery things. And this is 8 Petite, which is why I can't fit into it, by Christy and Jill. Christy and Jill needs to put out some bigger stuff. I don't know. Okay, I'll just throw it up here then. And the next thing I got, I might end up just wearing is a is a night shirt or something like that because I got it to put to have like Christmassy stuff for the covers there and I only have what two more jars and I already have something already cut so I don't know and this is just oh, I was gonna say I thought there was a pattern yes there is it's on the bottom Ugh. it's a velour top with some eh, embroidery ish on the bottom I mean, these things suck up cat hair like you won't believe, and your own hair as well. And this Diane Vaughn somethingberg, the color authority, 100% polyester. So I don't know. I'll probably wear it to bed because I think it'll fit, and I don't need to cut it up for that. Eh. And. If I look good in red, I'm pretty damn sure I ain't gonna look good in green. <laughs> so, no. Now, to uh, follow along with the phantom thing, this I could have gotten for 50 cents today, but it was the beginning of the week and I didn't know if it would stay there till Thursday, so I had to pay like three for this. But, it's this. Really, I mean, awesome. Now, this says Prima Donna, and of course I'm. The thing that I think of is the song Prima Donna, was, you know, that they're trying to beg Carlotta to come back to the, um, opera house. But the, not a big fan of Carlotta, I don't know. But it has your phantom mask and the diamond there, which is really cute. And it has Phantom of the Opera in the back. So I grabbed it because I wasn't quite sure if it would, you know, still be there. Because it's really hard to find, like, phantom stuff. Mm, so, so so somebody probably went to a show and you know picked it up because where else really would you get anything like this because I have a Phantom of the Opera pin we got when we actually saw Phantom the first time I've seen it a few times and yes the movie was awesome read the book if you question the parts of the mo movie that weren't in the show <laughs> so that was cool I mean, I hate having to, like, pay regular price. I mean, it's still only three bucks, but it's like, yeah, no, you can get it for 50 cents. It's like, ah. <laughs> the Phantom, I'll do that with. And the next thing was, I think only a buck. I think it was, like, half off. And it's a little snug on me, but for a t-shirt, eh, if you don't like my rolls, you know, go to another bakery, basically, <laughs> you know. And it is this. A Marilyn Manson t-shirt. And yes, I like Marilyn Manson. I, I, Beautiful People is still my favorite song of his because, I mean, you can't really guess what the artist means when he does a song. You can only take what your own interpretation of it is, and it's like, for me, it's like, really out of stuff. Go, going totally 80s now, like, like, oh my god. <laughs> Ooh, flashback. Just the shallowness of society of like, again with a like, sorry Marilyn. You know, that, that's what the song, you know, ver, ver, ble, ble, ble. Beautiful People reverberates to me about the shallowness of society, basically. And he's so fascinating to listen to when he's, like, being interviewed. You know, I just love how when he walks out and he's so extreme in his look and you expect him to be, like, a total idiot or something. I don't know, you, you, your typical mental stereotype there. And then he's so eloquent and... Well, yeah, charming in a way, too. I mean, it's just a fascinating individual. I mean, some of his songs are like, eh, and the videos are like, eh? <laughs> but I like Marilyn Manson. Let's leave it at that. Not to be confused with Charles Manson, who nobody should like, because he's a psycho. <laughs> and when I put, 
<laughs> when I wore the t-shirt, everybody's like, Marilyn Manson thinking Charles Manson, and I'm like, uh, hell no. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. But then they're 90-year-olds, and I don't expect them to know, you know, Marilyn Manson. <laughs> Which, oddly enough, I don't have any of his albums. Now, this is hot off the presses today. And <laughs> I still, <laughs> still like, uh Usually if I go on like an off day, it's because I'm bringing Grace, and she's yet to buy anything, yet I'm the one that buys everything. It's like, bye! So you bring me to this you know, place of... <laughs> and you just know you're spending money. Now this I got specifically to make a coffin purse out of, which I think I got uh, a dress almost exactly like this, but it was like a two-piece thing. And this is, I wonder if it was at one time, because it's not kind of sheer, but not like sheer sheer. And it's uh, really skinny. And it's a, who the hell fit? This this is an 8, I think it said. Size 8 by DU Dress Company. Can we say, Damn. Hell, I couldn't get my boobs in here, little on my ass. But that's a floor-length dress, so there'd be plenty of material. And I don't know if you can pick up the rose pattern in here. So I think that would be a very, very pretty, pretty coffin purse. Be a pretty dress, but hell no. <laughs> so that should probably help. Oh, right. I can't, okay, this I just pulled out. Because <laughs> you can't do anything until you show Grace the stuff. Okay. And the next thing I bought, I got to wear just just for bed clothes. I usually don't do that, but I liked it because it has pockets in it and zipper pockets besides. I mean, I mean, well, I call them bed clothes, but I guess you know, just lounge around the house clothes <laughs> that you can wear to bed. They sort, of, they sort of perform both functions to me. But uh, and these are extra grande from. Pro Spirit Athletic Gear. And these are, extra, like I said, extra grande, I think I said. so. But they have the, the drawstring, so if they fall off my booty, I can at least hoist them up with the uh, drawstring. They're, they're, they're looking a lot more pink in here. They were a little more reddish in the store, but I don't care, really. A snag, but I, I mean, they've got back pockets, too. So if you go walking, these are probably good walking pants. Because you never have pockets when you want them. That always ticked me off. Probably like a polyester. They're that weird Velcro type material, you know. <laughs> they're, they're silky, but they're Velcro y at the same time. Not a big fan of the material, but eh, it looked comfy. And kind of more of a. I don't know, between a weird peach and a pink color. Okay. And the other thing I got today for 50 cents was. Hmm, I wonder if these will fit. Would I want to wear these? I don't know. But I actually got these for, for, again, lining, because, you know, the nice silky material, and it's lingerie. But I hate shorts. Well, I mean, in the summer, I suppose it's good, but it's like, I don't know if I, I don't know. Is it me? Is the crotch really wrong here? <laughs> I don't know. Kind of sheer, too. But then it's lingerie. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea even what to say about these. It's like, what the hell? Little little blue things, they're medium. Well, it might fit, but I don't know if I want to wear lingerie that's been on another person's ass, especially in pants. So I'm not quite sure what to do with those. But the top Ugh. the tag is bigger. Why the hell is there a shoulder pad in a freaking what the hell? This is lingerie people. Really? I mean I can see padding the boobs maybe, but what the freaking hell are these doing in a piece of freaking lingerie? Oh, you think they'd learn. Why? Val mode lingerie. Medium. And uh, it's a pretty little top with... Uh, why do they put those in there? With the, see, you can't even hold on to those stupid things. Shoulder pads have... Shirt. Silky. Blue. Ah. Okay, enough of that. 
Now this is sort of the piece de resistance. It's really... Am I like popping in and out here? What? Don't have, oh, yeah, I forgot. I have other stuff. I'm like, what the heck is... Yeah. Okay, we'll save the rest of it. Okay, we'll save that. Oh, wait. Okay. Now these I picked up... I still can't remember if I've got this or not. I want to say I do, but then I might be mixing it with a DVD. I have no idea. But this was 50 cents, and it's Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl, the soundtrack. Yeah, for 50 cents, I'm like, yeah, if I have it again, I can't remember where the hell I put it, so <laughs> it's around somewhere. So I've got that. And I can't remember. Bootstraps, bootstraps, the medallion calls, skull and crossbones, he's a pirate. <laughs> Mitchell Swabby Lib. So, that's just really cool. And for 50 cents, hell yeah. Ugh. Can't play it in the car, but I'll be playing it in the computer shortly. Now, this was two bucks. And I'm usually not one for blood, guts, and gore. And it goes Blood Omen, Legacy of Cain, an epic role playing game. And it's really hard to find a flipping role playing game now that you don't have to be online for. And I was in GameStop, what, last year or something? It was a while ago. And this woman wanted, you know, a standalone game. And she wasn't arguing, but it was annoying what he was saying, that it's like a security thing, and it's just like you have to have internet now if you want to play any type of game now. And it's just annoying, because I don't want to have to play with you people! <laughs> I want to sit there in front of the computer, solving puzzles, doing quests, without having to worry about somebody pissing and moaning about, you know, oh, you didn't get this thing, or you have to come with me on this quest, and it's like... No, that's what Second Life's for. <laughs> no, I love Second Life. People are awesome in Second Life. But, you know, it's not, for me, not fun. You just want to, you know, relax and not have to, especially if you're dealing with crazy people all day and you want to enjoy yourself, you don't want to have to go online and deal with more crazy people. So it's really hard to find a good role-playing game, period, let alone being one that goes online. So, usually you can find the older ones, and this came from 96, 97, so the graphics should be rather hysterical. And it goes, Revenge! You can almost taste it. You desire vengeance. You lust for blood. You are Cain. Your enemies killed you in the ultimate act of treachery, but through the blackest sorcery, you have returned as a vampire. For sustenance, you must feast upon the blood of the living. For revenge, you will exact the darkness Zack the darkest of fates upon your murderers. Eh, sounds interesting. <laughs> so, it should run on my... Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna run on the computer. <laughs> Windows 95. So, it should run on the XP. So, this should be kind of funny. If it was like one of the newer ones with like the realistic blood and guts, it'd be like... Pfft. So, this, this should be interesting. For two bucks, it's worth a shot. I mean, I've, I rarely get any any games anymore because they're the only games you can find now that are like advent. Um, how does this qualify as an adventure? Those seeking finds. You're standing there in a room finding crap. I'm done in ten minutes. There's no challenge for me there at all. If you move the stuff around every time you played, that would be sort of a challenge. But they don't. <laughs> it's like. But then you know whereabouts are they hide anyway, so it's like. That's not an adventure. I mean, they're fun, but the, the fun dies quickly. And that's all you can find now for, like, standalone games. Mm. But if you like role-playing games, go for the Crondor series, Septeracore, which was really, really, really awesome, and Divine Divinity, which I've yet to reach the end, but it's, it's there's just so much to do there, and the graphics are good, and, you know, those are, like, the three best role-playing games ever, and... If you like the old side-scrolling ones, I want to say Avion, but it isn't, um... Oh my god. It's, it's by the creator of Avion, and I can't remember what the heck the game was called. <laughs> but the old ones there, and some of you can just, just f type in free RPG games, and you can find some, like, really cool old-style games. I wish I could remember that. And the last thing I got... That will end my pointless rambling for a while. Is a pair of dun, 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 
Trip pants. Yes, you can start the poser comments now. These are really freaking expensive, <laughs> which is why I only own, I think, two pairs, and I own, I bought, which they're not actually trip pants, they're actually made by Dickies, and I got them at the Topic, they're floating in the other room, and they were like, a weird size, like a 16, no, it was like a 15, or some weird in-between size, but they were like way too big, so I had to like tuck them in so they look funny in my butt, but they're really cool. And these are the ones I had just finally learned how to hem, so now I don't have to step all over them now. So I can enjoy wearing them that much more. And I probably got them when it was like half off the clearance forever ago. And I got another pair probably under the same thing, but they're the low rise. And, you know, when you bend over or sit down, you end up with butt crack, and that's just not cool. <laughs> so I buried them somewhere. So now I found these, and these are men's pants. And these are a 30 waist, and they looked similar to a 10. So now that I've lost a few pounds, I have no idea what the hell my waist size is. I'm really hoping I can squeeze my booty in here. And these are actually trip pants. The only thing from trip I think I own are the corset tops, which you can't find anywhere else other than the topic. And they have, they might have had, I don't know if they've had that chain, you know, the chain... Which I think my original ones, Dickie one, Dickie's ones did, but I lost them years ago because I kept getting in the way of everything. But they have little metal doodahs here. And the zipper down the side. Uh, only on one leg. No, nope, no, nope, they are on both legs. Oh, cool. So, yeah. I mean, they're just really neat looking pants. I don't care if they're like poser golf or whatever the hell it is. I mean, I'm not... <laughs> I mean... I don't know how many people try to be goth. It's just something you inherently are. These are just pants I enjoy wearing. I mean, they're really expensive, and to find them for six bucks, oh, hell yeah. And they're just my taste, basically. So, you know, mall, goth, whatever, I don't give a rat's ass. So, so, I'm eagerly waiting to see if my booty fits into them. I might see a lot of sucking in in the future, but <laughs> I will find a way to get into these pants. And this is another Goodwill goodie. My new desk! And it's so nice to sew without the table going blah 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 blah. A nice sturdy desk. And does anybody remember like your teachers having these desks? With a you know fold out thing here and everything that was kind of over there is still kind of over there. See those are the new coffin purses that are in the in the process of being made nice two deep drawers so I can like pile up as well as deep we had to like disassemble it to get it in the room though I haven't quite figured out why there are two holes like somebody screwed something there why there wouldn't it be in the way because you're sitting you know right here and there's your pull out drawer what would be there that your elbow wouldn't bounce into that you would have to you know screw down it was ten dollars and it goes as is and I'm like everything works uh, looks pretty good yeah I'm taking it and I've been debating for like weeks about <laughs> do I want it do I want it and then since my hubby was home we managed to fit it into his vehicle so <laughs> I have a new desk so that is it for that Comment, rate, subscribe, push, push various buttons that will do me well. <laughs> Sometimes you never know what it used to be over here, then I was here, so push a button that shows love. <laughs> and thank you for watching my inherent rambling. And I shall see you all in my next vid. Hopefully I will have something fun and wonderful and exciting to film on. <laughs>